Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are doing today and it will be posted to our website in our archives uh, for you to watch um, at any time at your convenience. And I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can access all of our archive shows. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do share uh, with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, <laughs> anyone you think might be interested in any of the topics we have on the show. Uh, for those of you not from Nebraska, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries. Uh, that would be similar to your state library. Uh, so we provide services and programming and resources to all types of libraries in the state. So you will find uh, shows on Encompass Live for all types of libraries, uh, public, academic, K-12, um, corrections, museums, archives, historical societies, uh, everything and anything. I really, the only criteria that it's something to do with libraries or library related. We do book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos of services and products, all sorts of things. Uh, we sometimes have Nebraska Library Commission staff come on the show and do presentations about resources and services we're offering here, but we also bring in guest speakers as we have, and that is what we have this morning. Um, uh, Tammy and Sarah are going to talk to us about their uh, the Libraries and Veterans Toolkit that um, they're both involved in. Uh, let's see, I'm just looking at my legs here. Okay, cool. Um, and um, with some great resources that um, all sorts of libraries can use, which I think is awesome. So I will hand it over to you, uh, Tammy and Sarah, to um, fully introduce yourself and uh, tell us all about the toolkit. Great, thank you so much. Um, and um, thank you everybody for coming to our webinar today. My name is Tammy Owens and my pronouns are she and hers. I'm the outreach librarian, outreach and instruction librarian at the University of Nebraska Omaha. And I'm here today with Sarah Lemire, project lead for the Libraries and Veterans Toolkit, who is also an Army veteran herself. Um, and she was the one who started this whole thing. Um, and um, I was very, very pleased to um, be a part of it, um, a very small part of it. So today, Sarah will introduce the toolkit. And I will then, um, after she is done, I will also um, uh, introduce or, and speak about a few ways that I serve um, and support and celebrate military affiliated students at the University of Nebraska Omaha. And then throughout our presentation, um, we'll just have polls for everyone to answer and um, always feel free to ask questions at any time. Absolutely. Thanks, Tammy. All right. So before um, I kind of get started. I want to take a moment to acknowledge and, and thank uh, IMLS, uh, without whose support we could not have done this project. Um, we're really proud of, of what we, we've come up with and are very grateful for that funding. So to give a little bit of background, um, this toolkit came out of a larger project, which was called the Libraries and Veterans National Forum. And this project was kind of a, a brainchild that was really about Kind of stop stopping this kind of reinventing the wheels that I was seeing. Um, every time I go to conferences and talk about veterans, I hear from folks who are doing this work, but are not connected with other people doing this work. And so what we wanted to do was bring librarians together who are working with veterans, military populations and their libraries and share ideas. What are you doing? What are you doing? Let's let's not reinvent the wheel. Let's let's build on each other's work and borrow ideas because I don't know about you all, but I was looking for new ideas. And so that's, oh, somebody did this thing. I'm gonna do that at my library too. That sounds like a great idea. So what we wanted to do was physically bring librarians together. And then of course the pandemic happened. So what we ended up doing was uh, hosting this project virtually. And the great thing about this is that um, all of the presentations that we have from librarians around the country, all kinds of different libraries, are all recorded and available on our website. So if you're interested in seeing what people were talking about, what they were doing, uh, we do have those recordings available. The forum happened last fall, and then we followed on that um, initial gathering 
uh, by offering micro grants. That project also ended, but was a great way to get people um, engaged in talking about or engaged in, in trying out things that they saw at the forum. And then we made a toolkit, and that's what I'm going to be talking about today. So quick acknowledgement again of my colleagues who worked with me on this project. Uh, my colleague Stephanie Graves um, was my co-PI on this project. Uh, Beth German, who is at Texas A&M and now is at Princeton, um, was our toolkit designer. And then Janina makes the magic happen, and we could not do any of this without her, her guidance and, and support. So before I talk about the toolkit itself, I want to get a sense from you all. What are, are you already working in this area? Are you, are you kind of interested in this but haven't started yet? So what I'd like you to do is give us a response at this link here. It's pollab.com slash TamuLib, or you can text TamuLib to 37607. And then I'm going to switch over tab by tab here to pull everywhere so we can see what folks are saying. Okay. So there, like right at the top of the page, so in case anyone's worried about it going away. <laughs> um, yeah, let's see what comes up. So please go ahead over to there. Oop, there we go. We got some answers coming in. Absolutely. <clears throat> The tough thing with these polls is that it's hard to tell if it's other people are still waiting to respond or if everybody said the same thing. So I'll give it just a second or two to see if anything shifts around. But it looks like not currently doing this, but kind of thinking about this seems like the place that folks are, which is really helpful to know when we're thinking about the toolkit, because that's one of the populations we're really trying to serve. Okay, seeing no shift there. I'm going to assume that this is where we are. We're at the no, but we're thinking about it stage. That's nice. great. Okay. All right. So now the toolkit is intended to serve multiple audiences. So it's intended to support folks who have not done this and are looking for ways to get started, and also for folks looking for new ideas. So it's it, there are a range of activities that are built into the toolkit from like, I'm, I'm not sure what to do. What kind of things could I add to my collection? Um, what would be something I could do for Veterans Day to more, I'm doing Veterans Day kind of stuff. How do I kind of push outside of the month of November and look at more um, broad programming? So the toolkit was populated by librarians like Tammy from, from all around the country. So we had academic librarians, public librarians, military librarians, VA librarians, just a whole host of librarians come together and come up with ideas, things that they're already doing in their libraries that they can kind of write up and kind of make a program in a box. What, do I, what am I doing at my library? What's been successful? How would I tell somebody else to do this? And so we took those programs in a box and we put them in a searchable toolkit. So the toolkit itself, this is kind of what it looks like, and I'm going to toggle over and show you it uh, itself in just a second. Um, but it's intended to be searchable and browsable, so you can look by library type. Um, we want to push outside the idea that right, um, a program that was done in an academic library can only be done in an academic library. So you'll see that some things we were said were appropriate for multiple venues. Uh, the types of program. So are you looking for a display? Are you looking for a panel discussion? Are you looking to populate your collection? What kinds of things are in there? Um, your programming audience, because a program that's for right, young children of service members is gonna be different than for student veterans at, at a university. Um, so programming audience, and then the topic. Are you looking for something for financial, uh, financial uh, literacy month? Or are you looking for something related to um, uh, like art therapy and creative activities and things like that. So we have it sorted in all those different ways. And then everything is licensed, uh, Creative Commons licensed, so that you, know, you are, are free to use and build upon it and, and share it out as well. So I'm gonna toggle over again and switch to my, my toolkit here. This is the actual toolkit. And so if I wanted to look for, say something from a public library, I can click on public library and you'll see a whole host of programs available here. So maybe I'm interested in doing an oral history program. I can click on this item 
and I'll see that it has a description of what they did, right? It'll tell you the audience that it was aimed at, costs, right? Costs are so important, right? It's sometimes it's like, well, I could do that, but how much is it gonna cost? Um, you can see that often there's a range. So some things don't cost anything in the toolkit and others are more um, have a more substantial budget. Timing, so knowing right, how long it takes to plan such an event is often really helpful. How long the event lasts. So some things it's like, it's gonna take an hour or it's gonna endure for an hour and other things it's gonna be for a long period of time. Any specific resources needed, particular tips for success. Um, this is kind of that, that place where you could tell somebody, you know, this works, but you really have to do this thing, right? It's gonna be really helpful if you find a, a strategic partner or, um, you know, you wanna make sure that you give yourself enough lead time because it takes longer than you think it will. Um, ideas for how to access it, partners and stakeholders, additional resources, and then you'll see down at the bottom, some of them will have files. So sometimes they'll have um, like an assessment tool that you could reuse, or um, like here, there's a sample budget. Um, so they're trying to give folks enough of a enough of a starting point that folks could really say, I can do this, I can bring this to my supervisor and say, I wanna try this project, this is how much it's gonna take, how much time, right? Here are the people I need to reach out to. And you have a pretty concrete idea of what you need to do. So that's the idea of the toolkit, is to give this kind of resource that folks can, can really get some ideas of what they could do to get started and how much of an investment it's gonna be so that you can find something that feels like it's appropriate for the amount of time you have, the budget you have, the human capacity that you have, um, and really think about what can I do um, that's been successful in another library. All right, I'll hand it over to you, Tammy. Great, thank you so much. So um, I attended uh, the forum and I was um, involved in creating the toolkit. Um, and I, I have been interested in this primarily because I've been very connected with our Military Connected Resource Center um, at UNO, at the University of Nebraska Omaha. Um, and so um, I wanna tell you a little bit about our partnership and then about our uh, some of the things that we've been doing together. Um, so, um, so go on, go ahead and go to the next slide, Sarah, please. Um, so our Office of Military and Veteran Services, as it was called then, um, began at UNO in 2012. The office is de dedicated to the needs and the fulfillment of the goals of our military veteran, guard and reserve, and dependent student population. That is their mission. <laughs> so um, since its inception, the office has um, generally um, processed benefits, provided resource counseling, um, advised on programs and school admission, and really created a space that's really dedicated to the military-affiliated student population. Um, they have study spaces, they have computers, they have um, study rooms, and, and it really is um, designed by and for military-affiliated students. Um, on the screen is our statistics from a few years ago, um, and our statistics for military connected students enrolled has generally gone up over the years. Um, and I, I know that I am, and, and I think the entire office is particularly proud of being best for vets. And then we also work really hard to continue serving our military connected population, however we can. Um, so our university also has connections with Offutt Air Force Base. And in addition to the work that I do with our Military Connected Resource Center, um, our business librarian has worked with the US Strategic Command Strategic Leadership Fellows Program out of our College of Business Administration. So there are many different connections to the military at UNO. I was wondering the question, is, do any of the other um, University of Nebraska campuses have a similar thing or is it mainly UNO because of Offit being there? Um, you know, I don't know. Um, and I have, uh, that's a really good question. And um, that's something that, I, that I'm that i definitely going to be asking. Um, I know that we have people at, um, at Offit that, that, I can, that I connect with and that MCRC connects with often. So um, yeah. I, I don't think their partnership is quite um, the same as this partnership, I think, that I have. So, yeah, um, but it's definitely something that I'll be asking. 
right yeah you're both close to, you're right close to there yeah yes yeah we actually get um and and you'll see this in our library guide that i'll show you in a bit we actually get um active duty military folks coming to campus using the library at uno so nice. it's a little bit different yeah yeah, yeah. so um our partnership uh, between the libraries and the Military Connected Research uh, Resource Center. Um, that This was one of the first partnerships that I pursued when I became uh, the outreach librarian at UNO, when I actually came to UNO six years ago. Um, I started with a limited kind of service, but it really quickly became a two-way partnership um, because I would go in and we would all chat. Um, I would really just hang out at the office um, because frankly, not a lot of people know what librarians do um, or what they're there for. And so, um, and this was uh, especially so for this population. Um, they had expectations about what a librarian was um, and didn't understand the kind of wraparound services that I offered. So um, the partnership process has really been iterative um, because staffing in the Military Connected Resource Center um, they even changed their name over the last uh, six years. It's fluctuated between, um, so when I first got there, there were five full-time employees, um, uh, one of whom was um, quickly um, not there. He, he actually went into the military and um, was deployed. So, uh, but five full-time employees and 14 student employees in 2016, which is a huge office. Um, and they were doing lots of different things and lots of different um, outreach um, to one part-time temporary person holding everything together over COVID. So, um, and now the office is restaffing, rebuilding, um, and they really do have great things to come. So, so we are now um, figuring out how that partnership continues going forward. So, so these are some of the services and programming that we do together to support military affiliated students at UNO. So the items with the asterisks, asterisks, I knew I would have trouble with that word, um, are in the toolkit. And I, I know that many of the other things are also in the toolkit, but these are the things that I'll be talking about today. Um, so let me just quickly go through the first three things and then move on to the other ones uh, a little bit deeper um, in, in the slides to come. So research help is really one of the first things that I offer to all of my student, student success partners. Um, I typically go to MCRC, the Military Connected Resource Center. You're gonna hear MCRC quite a bit over the, <laughs> the next few minutes uh, for an hour or two every week. Students can also book time with me in my office, at the library, or online over Zoom. So at MCRC, I usually end up, um, though, offering really informal research advice to students who are, again, hanging out in the office. That is the primary thing that I do, is I come there and I say, how is your semester going? What are you working on? And that's when students, especially military-connected students, will be like, oh, well, you know, I am i don't know, everything's fine. And I say, really, is everything fine? Because I can help. Uh, and that's when we get down to business and talk about um, how, to, how to do those research papers. Um, so, uh, and then pre-COVID, new student orientations were held in person several times throughout the summer. So I would go to those orientations and have a five or 10 minute um, PowerPoint for new or continuing students during that time. Um, currently, MCRC holds uh, new to campus and uh, new to campus familiarization events um, for students that are either new to UNO or never attended a campus tour or orientation. So that was a big thing. They were finding that students, even if they um, even if they were UNO students for several years, they never really attended a campus tour because um, they just kind of came in as transfer students um, and that was it. So we are a stop on the tour and we actually offer students a 15 minute, 10 to 15 minute small group kind of walk around of the library. Um, it is a tour, but it is a very personalized sort of tour. And then the next thing, um, the, the events and um, the receptions and events um, are things that um, are held either by and at MCRC or at the library. Uh, we library personnel regularly attend events hosted by MCRC, um, such as a pre-COVID wellness fair where the library had a table 
And uh, the library also occasionally hosts events for military connected students specifically, such as a fair for employers to meet students. Um, and more recently, our Dean has become the Student Veteran Organization's faculty advisor. So the SVO meetings are now usually held at the library, which is a really great connection. Um, so I'll go into more detail about these last three, the library guide, reciprocal training, and library displays now. So if you're at an academic library, um, something like a military and, and veteran library resources guide is a really, really easy way to reach out to your military affiliated students. So in the toolkit, you'll see that there are a few different guides linked and each guide has resources specific to their students or their patrons. Um, and this is really the key to success, I'd say, to this type of passive programming. Uh, personalize that information for your military affiliated students or patrons, especially for specifically your students or patrons. So on our guide, we have information for active duty personnel. We, because we're right there near, near Offit and we had um, so many people coming in and asking if they could, um, how they could use our, our library and what they would need. So, um, and in fact, we, had to establish those, those policies and those procedures for active duty um, personnel. And, um, and I even was looking through my back email just recently, um, and we even kind of had to explain parking. We tried to get parking on campus for them because they would have their office sticker. Um, and so we had to work with parking. Um, and unfortunately that couldn't be worked out, but we were able to tell them how and where to park um, most easily for um, coming into the library. Um, so we have that information. We have a list of the technology available for checkout at the library. We have descriptions of the spaces in the library, so they'll know what um, kind of what it looks like and what they can do at the library before they get there, um, including how students can study with dependent children in the library, because that was something that we knew was a question. Um, can I bring my dependent children? Um, and how do I go about um, studying and being there with them? And then a section at, with links to databases and doing research um, and, um, and, and a, a connection to me as well. Um, so we have links there. Um, as well. And then um, the next one, the reciprocal training. So um, the toolkit, um, you'll see on the toolkit, and Sarah, I don't know if we want to go to the toolkit pages or not. Um, it's totally up to you. But you'll see on the toolkit that the train the trainer program is a very simple program. It doesn't have as much in it as um, the, the last thing that Sarah um, showed you. It is literally um, a, a training program to show tutors and student employees the library guide and to teach them when and how to refer students for a consultation with a librarian. Um, but it was, it's always really, really interesting because the students are eager to learn. Um, and so just having this, you know, here's an expert training me on what to do when somebody says I have a paper. You know, and they are very happy to follow directions um, and, and know what to do in that situation. Um, we extended that with reciprocal training. Um, we had a training for library staff, which was um, attended by approximately a third of, of the staff members. Um, and they attended training about the at what was then called the Office of Military and Veteran Services, um, which um, gave them information, gave our library staff information about the typical, and I'm using air quotes here because there is no typical military student, but um, the typical student and how best to work with military affiliated students. Um, so that training was really, really helpful. And, and I hope to do that again because it's been some time um, since we had that training. So, um, so that was reciprocal training. And then the next one um, is just so much fun. Uh, there's um, library displays. Uh, we actually very recently, these are uh, pictures that were taken last night. Uh, we recently partnered with MCRC for a bit of a display takeover. 
in our library. Um, they actually designed, designed four display cases using material from our collection to educate students about the history of military service in um, sort of by the decades. So it's sort of almost by US wars throughout history. Um, and that's um, you know in honor of Veterans Day. So um, really, really great. And it was especially great to partner with, with our affiliate, with MCRC, um, because they brought everything except the books and the videos that you see. Um, they brought the flag, they put it all together, and it really connects this um, to our collections and our service and our services. Um, and they, uh, this was done by um, student employees at MCRC. So now they know the collection even more. Um, if I were to select um, items, then I would always have this question. I, I'm not a veteran myself. I would always have this question. Is this appropriate? Is this book something that, you know, I want our veterans our, and our military affiliated students to be looking at and to know that this is part of, um, you know, part of the history, um, you know, so because they were chosen by our students, um, that makes it so much better um, and so much more. Um, it just, it just, this is this is something that just makes me so happy because it was done by them. And there are two more pictures, I think, of of other um, displays on the next page as well. Um, yeah, these are just they're just incredible, uh, and they're all over our library, which is just really great. Um, yeah. So uh, and then there are um, yeah. Go to the you should go to the page, Sarah, on the toolkit because there are other things that uh, this wasn't made, this wasn't created by me, um, but there are other pictures because I think the most important thing is to get that partner and to get those um, objects and other things that mean something to your community uh, within your display that just really personalizes it and makes people stop um, and look too. And these kind of things really catch people's attention, both Absolutely. um a military people that you are serving or maybe military people who don't know that you have these resources and it kind of gets their uh, wait what is this why is this here mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and also people who had no clue and aren't military and, and just are like hey yeah and it and it just kind of tells people that we do have that connection and we are honoring people um who have served uh, or who are currently serving or who have a connection to the military so yeah Sarah, do you have any other um, ideas about any of these things from the toolkit? I was trying to figure out how to share the links to them in the chat and, and <laughs> clicking all over things. So sorry. About that. Yeah, um, it's a little it's a little restrictive, but yeah, I can I'm copying some of these links to into there's a there's a chat section in your interface for all the attendees, and you can see that there. Um, that we'll also right. put. Um, Links we can put links to this. Well, there is. Let's see. I'm just double checking here. Um, yeah, we do have a link to like the main page of the um, toolkit or the the lib guide right. um, in the session in the show description. So that will get you there to all these different parts as well. Um, and I'll mention too while we're talking about it that these slides will be available afterwards as well to everyone. So Perfect. I'll. Um, uh, embedded links uh, you all will have access to um, afterwards when the recording is, is available. Perfect. That was that was sort of what I was hoping that people would be able to go to these embedded links um, after they were um, after the show. So that would be great. Thank you so much. Yeah, and I, I think seeing like the, the images of what this looks like is really helpful. Like uh, Tammy, the pictures that you're you're sharing of, of what the your student veterans came up with and how they Kind of conceptualize the display like it just gives ideas of, of what this could look like and you know how, how this could be put together what kinds of resources you might you might need or might easily have access to either on campus or just in your in your local community so absolutely and this is something that you know there's not a lot right i mean there's a there's a cord there's the flag there's the you know um they actually put the the um the fabric on the bottom. I mean, this is all them, and it's better than anyone that I've done in a very long time. So, um, so it's really great, um, and it just makes me understand that they would be um, open to and kind of excited about doing displays for other 
um, for other purposes. So oh. just kind of continuing that conversation and continuing that um, um, that partnership is just really going to be, a, a, I think, a really fun thing for us because we have so many display cases at the library um, and we're able to work with them. And, and their feedback for me when I was talking about showing these off um, because I was so pleased with them, their feedback for, for me was just sort of that um, they had a really great time working with our staff members. Um, we have a coordinator for our displays. Um, who is a staff member at the library and he just did a really great job in making them feel welcome and helping them um, and giving them sort of that autonomy that they wanted um, to be able to make these. So, um, so I think that they'll be back, which is a really great thing. Um, and so I think that's part of it as well. One of the things I'll, I just wanted to point out is um, in the guide that, that Tammy you were referring to, they also mentioned some other kind of dates or times of year that this might be relevant. So if it's like, well, November's already passed, but you know, I'm interested in doing something like this, there are other times that you could consider tying in such a display. So. Yeah, that's good to know. I mean, it is kind of, you know, convenient and it, it didn't, we didn't do this on purpose that this is, we're doing, this happened to be the date they picked and then it's like, hey, Friday is Veterans Day, how about that? So yes, for this year, if you're, unless you want to rush, rush, rush and do something now, it may be a little, but there's so many other throughout the whole year, absolutely. Okay, I can um, also send book the book list that they sent to us. Um, these students actually picked out pages and pages and pages of books for us. Mm. Um, and so if anybody wants that book list to do a very quick, uh, display. I am happy to email that out to anyone. So yeah. yeah, you may have a lot of these books in your collection this afternoon. You can go grab them and do something. Right away. <laughs> but yeah, I really like that idea of continuing displays uh, because displays to me are some of the easiest ways for people to get that kind of connection in their brain going and to say, this library cares and what else can I do and how else can I, um, you know, can I partner with this library? So throughout the year, it's so much, uh, is, is just a really great idea as well. Yeah. And then I really um, wanted to share, um, because I, I, I um, emailed with our assistant director over at MCRC and was kind of talking with her about, oh, I'm doing this presentation, I'm showing off your displays, I'm talking about, you know, MCRC and our partnership. Um, this is what she said um, and what she wrote back. And she said, tell them this, the library is a great resource for the military affiliate population with computers, resource materials, and helpful librarians. And to me, I mean, of course, this is something where she's like, yes, I know that you want, you know, I, I it, what, what this says to me is that the um, conversations that we've had have kind of, that understanding is there. Right, that, that understanding at the highest levels of the organization is there, that we have, it's computers, yes, and that was the first thing that she thought of, right, um, but also uh, the resources, um, and then also the librarians um, are there if, if students need them or if she needs them. So, um, so this says to me that, um, that, that, um, that she'll tell people um, and that she knows uh, what, what we have there. So, um, so this was, this was really fun to get. So that um, that is what that is what I wanted to share. So now we go back to you and to Sarah. Yeah. So I, I know that in our initial question, it sounded like folks were um, kind of in the in the brainstorming phase, right? What are some things that um, that I could, might be able to do at my library? But we also wanted to see are there things that maybe stuck out for you, or things that maybe you've already tried or, or have thought about doing in the past. So I have, again, a question for you, which is, um, what is something that your library has done or that you're working on, or I would even broaden that to say, or that maybe that we talked about today, or if you've been poking around in the toolkit that has jumped out at you, what are some things that maybe are piquing your interest? And I'm gonna come back to my poll and move forward. And we'll see what ideas folks have. So again, it's that, pullup.com slash TamuLib at the top, or you can text TamuLib to 37607. But we want to hear from you all. Choice of question, they just type in whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're thinking about, great. Um, while we're waiting for that too, someone did say, yes, please do share the book list. <laughs> um, if you want to, Tammy, if you want 
to send that to me, I can send it out when I send out the recording or I can okay. send it, I mean, I can, well, actually, I can send it out ahead of time because that won't be till, ready till tomorrow. But um, right after this, I can immediately email it to everyone because I have everyone's emails who logged in and registered. Great. I can Great. send it yeah. Quickly. Yeah, it'll take me a few minutes because I need to get it from our coordinator of our displays, but um, but yeah, then I'll send it over to you. Great. That's it great. Time today to everybody. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things that we heard a lot when we were putting together the toolkit was like, what books should I add to my collection? What are some good books to do book clubs on or to put on display? Right. We don't want to have to reinvent the wheel, so let's share those ideas and. Um, so folks contributed those kind of things to the toolkit too. So you can see what people did in their military collection that they added or what people book, what books they've been using on book clubs. Building relationships with campus units. Oh my gosh, that's so important. And it, it can be so rewarding. Um, the green zone sessions can be great. Um, a lot of times really understanding what the experiences that student veterans are bringing to the table. Um, it is so important to see who they are as students and um, the strengths that they built bring to campus. I think Green Zone's really good for that. Um, it could be a great, a great foundational, um, I guess, piece for then building that connection with your military students team. That makes a lot of sense. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm glad you'll be using it. That's that's the whole idea. We want folks to to use it um, to see what might but they might be able to, you know, to beg, borrow, and steal from the toolkit because that's what it's there for. Um, you know, let's let's make all of our lives easier. Um, you know, I am very transparent that I absolutely take ideas from that myself. And, you know, I've been doing this for a long time, but I'm always looking for new ideas and people are doing amazing things that I would never have, have even thought about. There's some great marketing ideas in there. I think it was uh, Appalachian State made, um, they call them cadet kids, uh, cadet kits um, for their uh, student veterans who had children. Um, so they put them in the in the library so that or in the the veteran center so they would have something to do. There's a little bit of marketing for the library there. I thought that was really cute. Okay, so looks like our 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 poll is is winding down. So I'm going to see if I can figure out how to get back here. So I wanted to mention our toolkit is a living entity. It's a living document. Um, if there is an idea that you have or you know somebody who's done something great, please encourage them to contribute it. Um, we are continuing to accept submissions. I add stuff as soon as they come in because we really do want to make sure that we're sharing those ideas. Um, if you try something for Veterans Day, if you do if you do a display or you, you have an idea that you got from the toolkit and you did something a little bit different, please share that with us so that someone else can, can borrow that idea and continue to pay it forward. So we've got that shared for you. Um, there's more information on our website. The link is there. And you're also welcome to get in touch with us if you have ideas, um, if you're interested in talking more, you wanna collaborate. Um, we, we try to keep that, that, that uh, avenue open because um, we, we're trying to build a community uh, around this work. and. Uh, you know, we we want to we want to welcome as many into the community as want to join. And like I said at the beginning, don't want to reinvent the wheel, and no one else should have to either. Uh, libraries are we we we're all about sharing and borrowing from each other uh, for our patrons, and we do it for ourselves as too. <laughs> Absolutely. So yeah. Any questions for us? at this at this point yeah let's see nothing came in while you were talking that's okay um if anybody anyway have any questions you want to ask of um sarah and tammy about the toolkit or ideas or um recommendations for things you can do ideas that you might have uh from this go ahead and type into your questions section of your go to webinar interface um that's where the, the theresa did post on one of our attendees about wanting to share the book list <laughs> um as I said, with the recording, um, while we're waiting to see if anybody has any questions or comments or anything you want to share, uh, the, the, um, the recording and the slides, and since we will be getting it, I'll add the book list as well, will be um, available, uh, should be done by the end of the day tomorrow. Um, and I'll get it posted up onto our website for everybody, so if you do want to access any of these resources, and of course, you can just go right there to the veterans.libguides.com website at any time. 
uh, don't have to wait for me <laughs> uh, to see if there's anything there that you want to look through. Um, okay, got some questions coming in here. All right. Um, Okay, so here, here's uh, someone wants to know how can we use Fold Three with this toolkit? Any ideas for someone just starting out? Don't know. I'm not familiar with Fold Three. Oh, Fold Three. Hey, here we go. It is uh, collections of original military records. Fold Three dot com. Oh. Interesting. I was either discover your military, your family's military past. Oh, it's part of ancestry. Ha. Yeah. So ancestry is like military thing. <laughs> you know, actually, I don't think we have anything in the toolkit related to like um, genealogy research or anything like that related to the toolkit. There's a lot related to oral history. Um, that seems like it's pretty common connecting with the Veterans History Project and the Library of Congress. Um, so there's that kind of historical component, but not so much on the like the genealogy side. And that would be really interesting um, if you're doing something in that area. I, I think we would love to to have that contributed to the toolkit because I think there would be other libraries that would be really interested in doing that. Interesting, yeah. Hmm. Fascinating. I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, I did not either. I know all about ancestry. Yeah, it's a discover your family's military past has links to US, Australia, Canada, New Zealand, United Kingdom, and then you can search by browse military records by war. Hmm. I bet you could you could do some really interesting programming there with you know, like exploring the, the the military history of your local community and, and to encourage people to sure. to explore that that resource as well. Yeah. That sounds like it would be a great program, like to to bring in the, the person who does all the genealogy programs at your library, and then maybe um, a partner from the community, um, you know, a military affiliated partner from the community, do this kind of really nice um, program on that. So yeah, that sounds really interesting. Yeah. All right, we do have another question here. Um, do you have many military affiliated staff at your libraries? Like, besides you, Sarah, of course. <laughs> um, That's a great question. So one of the things that I to anecdotally noticed is that libraries that have you know, active programming for veterans often do have um, either veterans or, or folks who are military family members um, on staff, that it seems to be um, often like a labor of love. Um, but it doesn't have to be. And, you know, it, it can be helpful to have somebody who has some experience to kind of bounce ideas off. But mm -hmm. if you don't have anybody on staff who, who has that background, you'll have folks in the community, right? Like Tammy, the, the student veterans can give you that, that lens. Um, you know, if you're at a university, they, they're, you know, maybe staff outside the library who have a military background. Um, I know on our campus, they just started uh, a military like faculty staff network. I think we're having our first gathering on Thursday. So I'm interested to see how that will go. But it, it, it's an interesting idea to bring together and see who in, in the staff of the, the university are veterans. Um, I think the idea is, you know, to create that sense of camaraderie on campus, but also to provide a support network for our student veterans. So that is, um, you know, something that um, like our campus is working on. Mm -hmm. To also say, you probably do have veterans in, in at least um, library networks. I, I I have found that, you know, at my library, you know, work there for seven, eight years now. And, you know, we'll find out that that person that I've been working with for, you know, six of those years is a veteran. And we, you know, found out years and years later. Um, a lot of people don't necessarily. Not everybody, I mean, not everybody mentions it right off the bat as something, you know, it was something they did and now they're working in a library and that's, it's. Yeah. 
<laughs> so you never know. Absolutely. You probably do and don't realize it. Yeah. Yeah, there, there, there were a few people that I didn't realize um, were veterans um, until I, until I asked, until I started asking around, and, um, and then now we have a lot of military affiliated folks, um, and in fact, our dean is military affiliated as well. So that's, um, he, his son is in the military, and so he knows a lot about that. Um, and so yeah, there's, there are a lot of different affiliations, a lot of different experiences, and we build on those. Yeah. I would say too that right, language can be a part of this. Um, you know, sub campuses will will kind of lump everything under the umbrella of veterans. Not everyone identifies as a veteran. Mm -hmm. Some will use military connected or military affiliated. Um, you know, people don't always see themselves in that lens. So, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, yeah, one of the family members and, and, and are like they would not of course are not veterans they'll say maybe you happen to be themselves but um yeah and having having those experiences and those people know I mean if you at your library are not military affiliated you definitely would want to talk to someone who is to make sure whatever you're doing is correct appropriate something useful to them in your community um and yeah just ask and see you never know <laughs> Local veteran service organizations can be a great resource for that, partnering with mm -hmm. your American Legion, your Absolutely. veteran board boards, whatever organizations are active in your community. Um, they can be a great partner, not just to kind of get a, you know, as a sounding board for your programming, but also as a partnership and to avoid um, competing, right? And then you can quite sit sure. other programming. Okay. Oh, yeah. If there's some organization like that in your community, contact them first, because if they may be um, already working on something, a particular thing you're doing, um, you could help each other. Yeah. Rather than just, you know, going two different directions on the same issue or the same topic or resource. Yeah. Um, I wonder if anyone here in the audience has, has done anything with their local American Legion or anything like that. Um, I suppose based on your poll, first poll question, possibly not if people are just looking for ideas, but definitely a good idea if you have any of those kind of organizations in your communities. Yeah, it'd be a really great way to get started. Yeah, if you want to bring people into what you're doing, that's where the people are. That's where these these people, these affiliated people are. <laughs> Connecting with existing networks is, is, yeah. a, is a great way to, to to start getting the program developed. Mm -hmm. And that answers the previous person's question about ideas for someone just starting out. Yeah, don't don't try and go it alone. Reach out to in your community. Yeah. And say um, veterans can be a, uh, sometimes a challenging audience uh, to connect with. Um, so mm -hmm. connecting with those existing networks can be helpful. Um, starting small and kind of building. Uh, can be a helpful strategy, and right fi finding finding a partner in the community. So finding somebody who has those connections, who's willing to be a partner, but who can also um, help connect with other veterans. Because you know it could be a great idea, but folks are busy, and you know it, it's hard to. I don't know, like it's hard for me when I get home and you know feed my kids dinner to then say, okay, we're going to go back out and you know go to a program at the library um, so it's easier to do that if you've made plans to do that meet up with friends and you kind of have that incentive to gather so creating that um, that sense of, of, of kind of a network that can then engage together can be a helpful way to avoid I think what we've probably all experienced which is the, like the program that like two people show up at um, mm -hmm. It's, and it's everybody hard. is just burned out with life in general <laughs> right mm -hmm. now. Um, and that, yeah, definitely you want to find out when would be a bit good time for those people to meet. Are they already doing some event maybe on a, a weekend and you could um, piggyback on that or something? Absolutely. That kind of thing. And once once you get them there, they tend to be very engaged. Um, mm -hmm. But finding, finding that right time, it really helps to have that hook into the community. Yeah. Have you experienced that too, Tammy? 
Absolutely. Um, and I've experienced this whole idea. I, you said starting small, and that's really, I mean, especially for that new student success librarian who's out there, um, start small, go in, hang out, and um, build on strengths. Um, our military community at our, at our university is uh, strong. Uh, they come in with um, the kind of education and the kind of skills that um, a lot of people only dream of. So um, understanding those skills and where they're coming from is, for me, it was a lot of hanging out, a lot of talking to them, a lot of asking them, what sorts of classes have you had? Where, you know, what are you taking now? What's your goal here? Um, and and then learning the language that um, our students um, kind of learning the 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 language and the the kind of the focus that they use and being able to um, explain for us for me at the university library research and our databases and things like that um, so they can get to their goals so that's mm -hmm. kind of where um, where how I approach that from and then just um, and and I can see us doing a lot more programmatic types of things um, and uh, just bigger um, and and um, more involved kind of partnerships to come. I think I like the, how you're describing that too, Tammy, and that, that student engagement person too, uh, starting in with that casual conversation. They don't even realize you're doing like your, your professional librarian reference interview thing. <laughs> um, we know, yeah, you just kind of sneak it in there and let's, oh, how's it going? let's dig a little more deeper into how's it going <laughs> and and i think that that's the way that it can start at a university library at a public library anything how are you doing what's going on um and then and then it gets to you know what we've got something that you might enjoy you know not we can help you but this mm -hmm. is something that you might find useful maybe um, use that small talk if mm -hmm. you have that skill <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah all right, other questions anybody has? Um, you can type into the question section. Uh, nothing came in here while we were chatting. Um, I am going to, while we're waiting to see if there's any more, I'm gonna pull presenter control back to my screen here, because I wanna show, there it is. Um, this out of my way. This is that Fold3 website that, that was mentioned before. Um, I just, I just did the Google's Fold 3 and it came up. Um, and it's, yeah, and I saw a little name here, it's out of Ancestry, yeah. Uh, different countries, different wars, records by war. Um, rare collections of original military records. Okay, now I wanna develop a program on this. This is, this is really, <laughs> really cool. It <laughs> New thing, new, new, new lib guide coming <laughs> uh, from the U.S. National Archives, National Archives of the U.K. and other international records. So this is from the actual um, country governments. Yeah. Nice. Very cool. Now I want to look at this, see if I can find my family in here. I'll do that later. <laughs> Oh, and the person, uh, someone, else mentioned, uh, someone else, a different person says it's a great site. So, uh, yeah. Good to know. As I said, I'm always looking for new ideas too. So this is great. Well, if we don't have any other questions, anything else you want to, any desperate questions you want to ask of Sarah or Tammy right now, get it into the questions section. Otherwise, there was the email there you, you had that was it, librariesveterans at gmail. Did I get that right? Yep. Yeah. And it'll be on the slides when you get them <laughs> um, as well. Reach out um, with any questions you have. Uh, this is our session page. I said here I've got a link to um, the toolkit itself, so you will have that as well. Or you can, re you know, go in here into all the different sections that they that was being shown today, and um, check it out for yourself later. Yeah. So I think we will wrap it up for today. Then we're almost at eleven o'clock. There's no problem here. Um, if anybody has any desperate questions you want to ask, get them in. I got a few minutes here of wrapping up. Um, any last words from you, Sarah and Tammy? 
I think we've covered it. Thanks everybody mm -hmm. for joining us and let me know if you have any questions. Yeah, thank you everyone. And um, thanks for having us um, yeah. on, on this. And um, please feel free to email me um, if you have any questions or need any more information about any of the things that I showed today. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Sarah and Tammy. And thanks, Tammy, for reaching out to me about um, bringing this on the show. I was glad we were able to do it. Um, I think it's an awesome resource. Libraries always need to be doing new things and, and you never know. You, you, the users in your community are going to be varying. And this is definitely a group that I'm sure is in almost every community has veterans or veteran affiliated, military affiliated uh, people in your community. So um, I'm going to pop back to our Encompass Live main page here. Um, if you use your search engine of choice, anything, you type in Encompass Live, and we are the only thing called this on the internet so far. Nobody else is allowed to use the name. <laughs> uh, these are upcoming shows, but our archives, I said I'd show you here is a link uh, after at the end of the day, today's show. Here's a link to our archives, most recent one at the top. So today's will be up there. Um, should have it up by the end of the day tomorrow at the latest, the recording. Um, like I said, though, as soon as I have that book list from Tammy, I will immediately email that out to everybody who um, attended today's show and registered for today's show, just so you have that right away. Um, it does take a little time for the recording to process and YouTube to process. So I don't want you to have to wait for that. Um, but then when the recording is ready, I will send another email letting you all know that it is up and the slides are available too. Um, the most recent one will be at the, it will be at the top here. Um, you can search our show archives while here. I can show you that. You can search the most recent 12 months if you just want something current or the full show archives. Um, the reason we have that limitation to the most recent 12 months is because this is the full show archives, and I'm not going to go all the way scrolling down because it's too long. <laughs> going back to January 2009 when Encompass Live first premiered. So um, do pay attention when you do do a search on our archives for the original broadcast date. Uh, many of our shows stand the test of time, and they're still good, valid. Um, information, but some things will become old, outdated, uh, links may be, may be broken, um, resources may have changed drastically or disappeared, uh, people may no longer work at the same libraries that they presented from. <laughs> so just pay attention when you're watching any of our um, archives. Uh, we do have, as you can see, I've got a link here and I've got to open over here. We do have a um, Facebook page. If you do like to use Facebook, uh, give us a like over there. Um, we post reminders. It's a reminder to log in today's show. We do a little um, meet our presenter posts. And then here's one from last week. We post here as well when our the recordings are up and other, other social media platforms. Instagram, Twitter, we also use the hashtag EncompLive elsewhere. So if you do want to follow that. Um, just making sure that else has come in. Okay, yeah. All right. So, in addition to, um, so that's, that'll wrap it up for today's show. Next week, our topic is Bad Bosses Tales from the Dark Side of Library Management. Uh, uh, Brooke Zarko, who's director of our Blair, Nebraska Public Library and Technology Center, will be presenting on that, talking about things, bad management. Um, it happens everywhere, and she's going to talk about how she's dealt with that and encountered it in her um, library life. Um, so please do sign up for that. And any of our other shows, you can see we're working into 2023 here already. We have shows coming up for that, um, you know, already already scheduled. So please do uh, sign up for any of those. Uh, and speaking about 2023, I just want to make one last uh, pitch for our Big Talk from Small Libraries online conference. This is a conference we host here out of the Nebraska Library Commission. It's a national conference. Anyone can attend um, from across the country. We are in, um, doing it for a little over 10 years now. And it is all of our presenters on Big Talk from Small Libraries are from libraries with an FTE, if they're an academic or a school library, or a population served of 10,000 or less. So this is presentations from our smallest libraries. Um, and right now, the call for proposals, call for speakers is open. So if you are a small library and you want to present on something, submit a proposal. The deadline is December 16th. Um, or if you know of any libraries that might be in this um, this type, uh, share this. Um, please spread the word anywhere and everywhere across the country that the um, call for speakers is open for this. The conference itself is on um, always on the last Friday in February. So February 24th, 2023 will be the actual one-day event. 
um, December 16th is the deadline to submit a proposal. So um, uh, please do submit or um, share and let people know that it's um, open and it's coming up for again next year. Other than that, please um, thank you everyone for being here. Thank you, Sarah and Tammy. This is a great presentation. Got some awesome resources here. I'm sure you get lots of traffic coming to this, the page now um, after this, I hope. And um, please do everyone sign up for any of our upcoming shows. I do have some more dates. I'm being, getting December and January more filled in here. So keep an eye on our calendar for when all those new, new uh, topics and shows get added. So thank you, everybody. And we'll see you all in a future episode of Encompass Live. Bye-bye. Thank you.